Pat, I know you've got a busy day and all. I'm just, I'm going to, is this a little section I'd like to do with you? It's called Rapid Fire. So there's a couple of little questions, yes and no's. Um, you ready? Oh, I'm always ready. What's your lowest score so far? 67. What? Yeah, 60, now 67. Now you just say The putter was fired. I mean, I usually oh. am like, I'm, I think I'm probably like a 77 type guy normally, but that day it was 67. Well, well played, man. So let's go to the other extreme, your highest score. You want to forget that? So the highest score, um, I think I, I shot a ninety-one. In that one, it was a mental thing. I kind of, I kind of checked out. I had twelve penalty strokes, and I, I was like, "Yeah, that won't happen again." One score in the nineties is enough. No, 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 that's fine. That's good. How many balls have you lost? I don't know, a couple hundred. <laughs> Maybe a couple in the ninety-one. I would think. Yeah, yeah, I lost uh, at least three a day. <laughs> that's right. What um, I mean, I know you're playing so many courses. What what would you say this most? What's the most difficult course you've played? Ooh, most difficult course. Um, that's a good question. Most difficult so far. Uh, actually, the honors course is pretty tough in Tennessee that I just recently played. Uh, oh no, no, Southern Hills was probably the most difficult. Um, okay. It was a cold day. It was cold, you know. And that course, everybody saw it at the PGA Championship last year. Uh, it was beautiful. It was a little dormant, so we didn't get the, the glory that you normally can. Um, which was this was an interesting bag. Um, at one point, I played Southern Hills on the, the very ex exact same day. Um, it, it was almost so. I took a picture. They have this clock tower there. I took a picture right when I teed off uh, on 1.0 uh, in 2018. And then when I came back in 2023, I took that same picture. Uh, and I looked at it, and I think there was there was only a ten minute difference. Wow. And uh, in, in so I just kind of revisiting some of the great places, but that place is tough, especially when it's cold. The ball wasn't going anywhere. Uh, you know, I think I was that was the previous high score before the uh, ninety one. Uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a difficult course. There was just trouble if you didn't get a good get a good driver on. So, okay. Yeah, let's go Southern Hills. I mean, I think it starts. I mean, good golf course design starts with the green, kind of works backwards, and the good ones do it. They're firm and fast, and you have to be really mindful about where you put your ball on the approach. Um, you know, a place like Oakmont, if you're on the wrong side of the green, you're just trying to make bogey, which seems absurd. A good player can almost always get up and down the bar. Um, mm -hmm. But in some places, um, if you want to get up and down the bar, you're going to have to be 30-footer. That's after a good chip. You know, so that that's fun because... You work back, and then you have to think about pin placement with your tee shot. You know, so things like that are, are where it's really fun to get into the architecture of the game. Not every course does a great job challenging a golfer like that. And I usually play much better when I, my mind is engaged. You know, okay. I'll, I'll check. Out, I'll check out a lot of times. Like today, I I went. I got. I, I was texting about. I was playing. And I went to the next tee and forgot to hold. Make, or I forgot the whole out of the last bowl. So I had to walk back, you know, and, and, and play. So it's easy to check out when you're playing this much golf, but a good golf, golf course will engage your, your golf brain and it keeps you thinking, and, and the results tend to be better, even though the, the course may be more difficult. Uh, without a doubt. Just on that note, so have you, are you going to be following the PGA this weekend? Probably not. I, well, I mean, I'll, I'll follow it, but I'm not going to sit down and watch it. Uh, the RGB tour is about playing golf, um, not necessarily watching golf. I love mm -hmm. watching Oak Hill is a great place. Uh, and I visited there on, on my first tour, um, it, but they renovated it since. And, and I've seen some pictures. I know it's great. Uh, and so it'll be fun. It'll be fun to watch. I mean, yeah, those old school courses um, are, are beautiful and they're, they're kind of making a big comeback. Uh, in terms of everybody seems to be doing a renovation right now, uh, you know, because of the demand for golf, the uh, the budgets are, uh, are slush, and so courses are you know they're trying to keep up with one another. And the fun part is, it's like these courses are now like I mean, that Southern difference between Southern Hills for the first one and the second one was like night and day, uh, mm -hmm. unbelievably better uh, after the the renovation they had, uh, and so that's cool. So I can play it. Uh, Basically, a brand new golf course is it's the same place. Pat, um, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've got one more question for you, and it's just a yes or no. 
And then I'm going to thank you and I'm going to wish you well. And we're going to be following you intensely. And I think it's an incredible project. I, I love the way your enthusiasm is going to shine through. And I look forward to you seeing you get the record. So the last question would be a yes or no. Live golf. Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, do you, you want me to expand on that? I've got, I've got, a, I've got an opinion on it, but uh, the short answer is yes. Yeah, so it's, it's great that I, mean, I had the chance to work with Alan Shipnuck, who kind of, uh, if you're familiar with, with golf, you should be familiar with Alan. But Alan was the, the journalist that, uh, that broke the stuff with, with Phil Nicholson and kind of started this whole thing right when Liv was coming out and really sent it to a, uh, you know, an issue. And, uh, you know, listen, the, the PGA Tour, the more experience that I've had with them, um, is they're not always, it's not always great, you know, as a media uh, person. Um, the, the PGA Tour has uh, had a monopoly for a long time. Uh, and with them, it's about control um, and it's about power. And I, I think they've been, um, you know, I think they would probably disagree with that, but that's because they've been in the world for such a long time. And uh, there's some things that have frustrated me as a, as a member of the media as well, with the PGA Tour. And what, you know, when you have a monopoly, the product's not going to be as good as it could be, you know? Um, and so the Live Golf Tour, I don't necessarily think that the Live Golf Tour is awesome. I'm not, I haven't watched any of the golf events. That I've been in. But what I do think is awesome about it is that it's, it's competing. In a, in a space where nobody where there has previously not been competition. And that's going to bring the PGA Tour up. Uh, and it's going to force, you know, in the end, the consumers should win, right? You know, I think it's going to be a long road uh, and see how this whole thing shakes out. There's a lot of, a lot of ins and outs and details, you know, from the legal battle um, to, uh, you know, what Liv is going to become as a, as a, Tour, but you've already seen. I think it's. It, it definitely feels like a knee-jerk reaction, you know, throwing money at the at the issue. And but listen, I, I think I don't care if these guys are playing for a billion dollars. You know, I'm not, I don't mm -hmm. think most people do. Um, the, the fun, the fun stuff is the tradition. So I love the traditions in golf. Uh, I, I think those will never go away. The PGA Tour is not going to go away. There's too much tradition uh, there, and people really are. It's brand new. So um, that being said, I think that there could be, you know, Phil was right about a couple of points that he made. Uh, and I think there could be a better way to have a more friendly competitive landscape. Now, you know, there's some strong personalities in the, in, in the, at the live headquarters as well as there's, some, you know, some, I don't know if they're bullheaded or they're just, uh, you know, it's old man golf in charge of the PGA Tour. Um, and, you know, I don't know these people. Uh, well, but I, I see, you know, what most people see. And then that's, so that's kind of my opinion from kind of outside looking in. And I mean, if nothing else, it's entertaining. I think people are clicking on live golf stories and PGA. And if you were to have a live versus PGA tour event, I mean, it would be outrageous how many people would watch it at this point. So it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. I think it's going in a, uh, uh, I mean, we'll see the direction it goes. I'm excited to follow and, uh, and see what what happens. Yeah, no, it's. I, I think yeah, that that's the intrigue behind the kind of mystery that we. Where does it all end up? You know, I mean, I, they've got to find some kind of solution, but it doesn't seem to be that imminent. If you know what I'm saying, there's a lot of lot of ironing to be done to to find a, a mutual kind of path for both both the tours, I suppose. Yeah, but yeah, we'll we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. Um, as I keep uh, keep an eye on these golf courses, so um, I, I don't have it's not it's not forefront in my mind, um, which is, can kind of be a good thing. I'll take it in, in little bits and pieces and get the get the highlights um, as I focus on my my march towards 500. Looking forward to it. 